Well, that's not the kind of headline I wanted to see when I woke up this morning. AMD RDNA 4 Navi 4X lineup rumored to not include any high-end GPUs. I'm seeing a very similar headline from PC Gamer. Next-gen AMD RDNA 4 GPUs reportedly won't compete with Nvidia at the high end. Now, the big thing to say here is reportedly, not officially. So uh, first thing is, where is this information coming from? Because this is 100% not confirmed by AMD. This is all in the leaks and rumors mill. So first let's look at where did this information come from and then what do we think about it, okay? So um, at videocards.com, they've tracked down a lot of the original, uh, you know, tweet sources that kicked off this firestorm of headlines. Uh, the first one seems to be from Kepler. So Kepler, uh, if you follow the GPU leaks and rumors, and I've been doing GPU news videos for two and a half years now, um, Kepler pops up a lot and does get a lot of things right. So that does lend some credence to tweets from Kepler, but it is certainly not an official source. Kepler says, Navi 4 lineup will not have any high-end GPUs. Think of it like RDNA 1 or Polaris generation. And I'll pop back more to what that means in just a second, but let's uh, follow that up with a couple of other interesting tweets on the same topic. So all the Watts, I don't remember having as long of a track record here, but all the Watts has recently tweeted information, uh, I think regarding the uh, 7900 GRE, um, and, and uh, possibly had some, I think, performance numbers for the uh, 7800 XT. I think it might have just been the 7900 GRE. But I do remember this name popping up recently with some information on some AMD products. And now they're going to the specifics of only Navi 43 and Navi 44 survive. So Kepler was just saying, will not have a high-end GPU. But what exactly does that mean? All the Watts is adding more details. Again, this is still completely unofficial though, so make of it what we will, saying that basically you would expect there to be a Navi 21 and a Navi 22, which are better than Navi 43 and Navi 44, and we're saying that only those survive. Now, Uzi38, I don't remember this name popping up, but videocards.com is including them here. Um, and it says, it's almost public knowledge now and probably will be eventually, but congratulations, guys, you did it. The way things are going soon, there will uh, really will be only one desktop GPU manufacturer left, just what you all wanted. Okay, <laughs> so that one isn't really adding a lot more detail, um, but definitely seems to be replying to these, and also I'm not as sure about the track record of this particular uh, person on Twitter. Maybe I missed something big that they've done, um, but anyway. Let's let's talk about what all of this means. So first, let's get down to the Navi 34 and uh, Navi 43 and 44, and will not have any high-end GPUs. So in the same VideoCards.com article, they do have a helpful uh, table here, and all my sources will be in the video description today. Let me ah, fly out of the way to the other side here. So um, basically, if you look at RDNA 1, right? So RDNA 1 topped out at the RX, uh, you know, uh, 5700 XT. That was their highest end GPU. Uh, that was on their no uh, a Navi 10 die, it looks like. And then they had some weaker GPUs than that. You had a 5600 and I think 5500. Um, I think there was a 5300. And, and that's where it topped out, right? They did not directly compete with higher end uh, and larger GPUs in that space. With RDNA 2, which is AMD's 6000 series of GPUs. They did go all the way up to Navi 21. They had a 6900 class GPU. They had a 6800 class GPU and all the way down the product stack. But the thing is, you know, I think one thing that we need to look at in, in all of this context is that this is actually, I think, more of a deviation from the norm that we had seen for a while leading up to that, right? Because if you also go back to Polaris generation, which is like what we saw here, um, we once again didn't see AMD competing with like the 1080 Ti or anything like that. They were competing more down in that mid-range segment. So for a while, that's where AMD was competing, and it's with the 6000 series where that that kind of changed, right? And we actually saw this, you know, the 6900 XT at least competitive with the 3090, uh, maybe not in ray tracing and some other features, but in raw rasterized performance, right? Uh, then with RDNA 3, we have had a Navi 31 GPU and a 32 GPU giving us a 900 class, although the 7900 XDX really was completing with, uh, competing with the, um, 
4080 rather than the 4090 in terms of raw performance. So you could say that they kind of slipped a bit there at the high end with this generation. And now these tweets are saying that they wouldn't even bother with a 31 or 32 class, oh, sorry, a 41 or 42 class GPU. Uh, would not complete compete at the 900 or 800 class most likely then, and would target 700 down. Now, the thing is though, that's where most people buy GPUs, right? Most people buy GPUs in that class. It really, and honestly, it's it really comes down to price point. <laughs> um, so really giving up that, that highest end may not be the, uh, the big doom and gloom uh, thing that you would initially take this for. Does this mean AMD is admitting defeat or does it actually mean that they're just going back to more of what they've been doing for a while uh, or at least frequently uh, with RDNA 1 and Polaris, for example, where they give a good value mid-range product. Now, the other big question here, I mean, beyond is any of this even true? Uh, I mean, videocards.com says that they tried to reach out to Scott Herkelman at AMD and up, up to this point um, has not received a reply or anything like that. So uh, beyond whether or not this is true becomes the question of if this is true, what happened, right? <laughs> Why? Is this just a, a, a business decision? They just feel like more money is to be made there? Is it a technology problem? Uh, is there something wrong with Navi 41 and 42? I went searching for other rumor mill type stuff, seeing what I could find. I did find a video from Red Gaming Tech who has accurately leaked things about AMD GPUs in the past. Um, I believe he was one of the first ones to talk about like Infinity Fabric, for example, on the, RD, uh, on the uh, Ryzen 6000 series. Now, uh, he didn't seem to have anything completely concrete in this video, um, and that's oftentimes how the, the rumor mill type stuff goes, but did seem to at least mention that there could be something going wrong with the uh, multi-chip designs uh, on the higher end GPUs. So I think there had been rumors that uh, there would be an attempt to go with multi-GPU chips on the same um, graphics card at the highest end uh, possibly on the next generation of AMD products, and that maybe that that technology just isn't working as intended, needs more time to develop. So there could be a look at just targeting the single uh, the single GPU dies that uh, that would be just easier to deliver on, might not be having the technology issues, and then you would maybe get your uh, your next generation where they just bounce back with some kind of interesting new technological development at the highest end there. That's certainly a possibility. Again, another possibility could just be looking at, um, you know, profitability, consolidating resources, all of that. Um, and just maybe more money is to be made, more GPUs are to be sold in this product class, the 700 series and down. I mean, if you look at the Steam hardware survey, I didn't pull that up here. You know, most of the GPUs sold are certainly in the uh, lower and mid range uh, product classes. That certainly seems to be where, where most of the sales are at. And again, I, I also think it's fair to go back to like, okay, again, RDNA 1, Polaris, that was, was their, um, that was their their strategy anyway at that time. And with RDNA 2 seems to be really where it changed, but I do feel like I should point out, RDNA 2 had a massive process node advantage. Uh, uh, NVIDIA was with their 3000 series of GPUs was on a Samsung eight nanometer process, which certainly seems to be much less energy efficient uh, than the um, TSMC process that RDNA 2 was on. And then jumping from RDNA 2 to RDNA 3, they move to a slightly better TSMC process, but it doesn't give the massive gains that Nvidia got jumping from Samsung's eight nanometer process to a very advanced TSMC process. And basically what that's saying is due to the, te I, I think it's possible that just AMD really just had an easier time competing um, with RDNA 2 due to those uh, process nodes that they were on. Um, at the, and that maybe allowed them to compete at the higher end a little bit easier with that particular generation. And NVIDIA jumping back to uh, TSMC maybe made that more difficult for them this time around. Also, um, uh, j just uh, thinking of stuff like at the highest end, I think it's harder to compete on value, which is where AMD often seems to be. Because NVIDIA, while they also offer you know high performance at the highest end, 
They also offer a lot of features that AMD does seem to be having, uh, you know, a bit of a struggle to fully compete with, right? Uh, things like DLSS uh, 2 uh, upscaling, FSR 2 is competes well with it, but is not considered as good. And then we have frame generation now, which AMD is promising some, sign, uh, some sort of a competitor to with FSR 3, but we still don't have that actually delivered. Uh, and then there is, you know, ray tracing performance, which as GPUs get more powerful, and especially at the highest end, I think it does become more and more reasonable to enable those high-end ray tracing features. So it is possible, um, but I don't know, I'm just speculating at this point, that maybe, uh, you know, it, it's hard to sell, okay, we have a lot of rasterized performance for $100 less when you're talking, uh, you know, $1,000 plus GPUs, when it's like, at that point, you probably just spend the extra hundred dollars for the extra features, right? Um, whereas at the lower tier, um, where maybe you wouldn't be enabling ray tracing anyway, just because you're you're struggling a little bit more for that performance, uh, things like that, maybe they just do feel a little bit more at home here until they really can uh, compete on those those feature sets. But anyway. I think that this could be perfectly fine. This isn't some kind of death knell, although I, I am scared to see what sort of prices we could see from NVIDIA <laughs> um, if, if there's nobody competing at the high end. I'd also like to see Intel get in here and, and compete a bit more. Um, uh, so it'll be interesting to see if maybe AMD and Intel have super competitive mid and low range uh, G GPUs and values with the next generation. And then NVIDIA maybe competes there a little bit more on, you know, their feature advantage, but doesn't offer as good of a price, and then really just takes the high-end GPU segment for themselves. I don't know, that's what this all points to. Um, but again, we really don't have any official confirmation of any of this. So really, we'll just need to keep an eye on the space, you know, from AMD's uh, slides here and everything like that. They did talk about RDNA 4, sustained performance leadership. That certainly seems to have been the roadmap. But as it says at the bottom, all roadmaps are subject to change. <laughs> so again, did something go wrong or, or do they just need more time on those um, higher end designs? What do you guys think about all of this in the co uh, comment section? Uh, super disappointed if this ends up being true or are you just like, well, honestly, most people buy in that mid, mid to low range anyway. So as long as they're competitive there and offering good value, maybe this doesn't really even matter all that much, right? Um, uh, again, for the more uh, <laughs> expensive GPU buyers, uh, again, let, let's hope uh, NVIDIA doesn't take that as a chance to have like a 5090 cost $3,000 or something like that. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments section, and I hope all of you, despite this, uh, you know, maybe disappointing news, uh, still have an excellent day.